in this video we will be continuing our lecture on or our walkthrough on exercises 1.2 of mr john coburn's pre-calculus so as i've mentioned earlier in the video uh, in the previous video to be exact um i'll only be doing a walkthrough on selected problems i won't be able to answer everything uh, so yeah uh for number 29 that's where we'll start so yeah um according to instructions you have to look for the reference angle associated with each rotation then find the associated point x y on the unit circle so for number 29 for a while uh, so first you have to look for the reference angle and the associated point the reference angle uh the first thing we need to do is we have to convert uh, theta from its current state, radians, to degrees. So there are two formulas. If you want to convert from radians to degrees, uh, we multiply theta with uh, 180 over pi. But if we want uh, to convert from degrees to radians, uh, it's basically the inverse. Uh, theta multiplied to pi over 180. So I help you take note of this. Um, it's going to be pretty useful. You wouldn't have to uh, stress too much about it once you've memorized it. Alright, so because theta is equal to 5 pi over 4, uh, convert it to radians. Uh, so uh, 180 over pi uh, 5 pi over 4 times 180 over pi is 225 degrees so what we want to know now is in what quadrant does this um, situate so in quadrant 1 uh, it's 0 to 90 degrees quadrant 2 uh, 90 to uh, I'm sorry uh, quadrant 2 is 90 to 180 degrees. Quadrant 3 is 180 to 270 degrees. And quadrant 4 is 270 degrees to 360 degrees. So, where do you think is 225 situated? Or, yeah, where is it? Where does it fall in? In what quadrant? Uh, it actually falls uh, in between 180 to 270 degrees, which is in quadrant 3. Uh, so, given that 180 degrees is equivalent to pi, uh, this is in radians, this is in degrees. Uh, 210 degrees is equal to... Why am I saying these random degree quantities? Uh, let's say... I'll draw an illustration to visualize what I'm trying to point out so this is 180 uh, this one is 210 the next value would be 210 plus 15 which is 225 degrees and the pi over 6 uh, the one that's I'm sorry the pi over 3 the one that's near the y-axis would be another uh, plus 15 with our initial value so 225 plus 15 is 240 degrees and here we have 270 so as you can see their difference is plus 30 here is also plus 30 and here plus 15 plus 15 so uh, 210 225 degrees and 240 degrees uh, pi 180 degrees is pi 210 degrees is basically i'm sorry about the noise uh uh, the noise is, the background noise is beyond my control anyways uh, 210 degrees uh, because it's closer closest closer to the y-axis it's actually something pi over 6 and because it's in quadrant 3 it's 7 pi over 6 why don't I know it's 7 pi over 6 again 7 5 4 quadrant 2 is 2 3 5 quadrant 3 is 7 5 4 and quadrant 4 is uh, 5, 7, 11. 
take note of those numbers you will one day realize it so 225 degrees in radians uh, you could say that it's something pi over 4 again quadrant 3 is 754 so it's 5 pi over 4 240 degrees is something pi over 6 uh, because it's 4 as a numerator it's 4 pi over 3 and so uh, if you're uh, pretty confused about uh, how I got the radian values from degrees uh, you could just do it the old-fashioned way uh, convert degrees to radians which again is theta times pi over 180 it's a more generic way to um, understand things in terms of this lesson but yeah do it any way you want whatever you find easy your easier okay so for number 29 uh, theta is equal to 5 pi over 4 obviously it's this one and then uh, the associated point x y is because it's pi over 4 the usual pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 and because this is uh, quadrant 3 it, uh, quadrant 3 is where x and y are both negative so obviously uh, x and y are negative here and so uh, this is the final answer I think the reference angle is already the value itself, the value of theta itself, presented in degrees and or radians. Uh, it depends on what the book is asking. Uh, as for this textbook, I'm not sure. But at least we have the scope of what we're trying to, or what we're tasked to find. So, let's move on to number 30. So, 30 is... 5 pi over 3 convert that to uh, degrees in, in other words multiply it with 180 over pi uh, what we get is uh, 300 degrees uh, in what quadrant does 300 degrees fall into uh, let's see Quadrant 4 is from 270 to 360. This is just an, a rough estimation. I wouldn't want to write uh, everything over and over again. It's going to be quite a hassle, if uh, you allow me to say that. But I hope you do understand. Uh, we are senior high school students. We're not, uh, we shouldn't be overly dependent over really simple concepts. Anyways. Uh, we already know that 300 is in quadrant 4, 300 degrees, and so uh, let's make an illustration. So we have something like this. Uh, this one is 270, and 270 plus 30 is 300. So here is 300, this is pi over 3. Why is it pi over 3? Uh, it, whatever is closest to the y-axis is pi over 3. Again, pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis. So, pi over 3, um, and because it's on quadrant 4, uh, we have the numbers uh, 5, 7, 11. Uh, for pi over 3, it's 5 pi over 3. So, uh, which, is, which is basically what's uh, given in the first place. So I think it. Uh, I think I hope you can understand the connections. Uh, so three hundred degrees, uh, pi over three is usually one over two and square root of three over two, and because it's con on quadrant four, x is positive, y is negative. This is the final answer. Okay, let's move on to number thirty one. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, theta is equal to negative 5 pi over 6. Let's convert that to degrees. Uh, negative 5 pi over 6. 
we have negative 150 degrees um, so this is pretty new uh, now that our theta is negative not positive uh, let's say I'm sorry in a Cartesian plane uh, so this is 90 this is 180 um, I think this is 150 degrees over here this is positive 150 um, if it's negative so starting from here at 0 so this is negative 90 uh, suppose that's negative 90 and this one is negative 150 degrees but then uh, this is 270 degrees this is positive 180 degrees and after positive 180 um, the pi over 6 here in quadrant 3 which is 7 pi over 6 is equivalent in degrees as uh, basically 180 plus 30 which is 210 so we could say that theta is equal to negative 150 degrees which is also equal to positive 210 degrees according to the unit circle so yeah uh, this this kind of uh, concept gives me the uh, underworld and mortal world vibes like the negative values are values from the underworld from hell and uh, on earth they're the positive values somehow <laughs> anyways I hate my imagination uh, but that's just my imagination you don't have to um, take note of it uh, so 210 degrees what quadrant does it uh, situate itself in um, 210 let's say quadrant 4 no 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 quadrant 3 um, so 180 degrees to 270 surely 210 is in between the values of that are under the dominion of quadrant 3 so given that it's quadrant 3 210 degrees again it's negative 5 pi over 6 pi over 6 values uh, in particular correspond to square root of 3 over 2 as x and 1 over 2 as y and so because uh, it's quadrant 3 and because it's negative 5 pi over 6 which is basically 210 degrees uh, quadrant 3 has x and y negative so yeah this is the final answer i suppose all right that's number 31 let's move on to number 32 just move this here there you go okay uh number 32 pi is equal to negative 7 pi over 4 uh convert that to degrees let's see what we get so negative 7 pi over 4 we have negative 315 degrees so in uh, an illustration let's see uh, so this is 0 degrees this is negative 90 negative 180 negative 270 uh, and this one's negative 300 and after plus 15 again we get negative 315 degrees all right so uh, this is negative 330 degrees uh, of course what's nearest to the x-axis would be pi over 6 and what's nearest to the y-axis will be pi over 3 pi over 4 corresponds to negative 315 degrees which in other words in the um, in the positive side of the unit circle is obviously is 45 degrees um, this is what I'm teaching right now is a long cut but as for a shortcut uh, just subtract 315 and 360 this way 
you get 45 degrees and yeah this is the one and so we all know that in pi over 4 um, it's all square root of 2 and square root of 2 and because it's on the um, on quadrant 1 both x and y are positive so let's just redraw them all here uh, it's negative 315 degrees which is this or you could just say 45 degrees all right that's number 32 let's move on to 33 so 11 pi over 4 uh, if you convert 11 pi over 4 in degrees it's actually 495 degrees it's basically if you dissect it it's 360 plus 135 so we want to visualize that in uh, a Cartesian plane so after one revolution which is 360 degrees and so 135 degrees so this is 90 so uh, 360 plus 90 what we have is 450 so we have 45 450 minus 495 is 45 degrees so another 45 degrees and we're done uh you can you can say that uh we landed on quadrant two and uh hang on for quadrant two so we could say that x is negative y is positive and that uh because it's 45 degrees that corresponds to pi over 4 uh, and because it's on, on quadrant 2 uh, we know that it's 2 3 5 so it's 3 pi over 4 and so uh, we get something like this all right uh, let's move to number 34 so 11 pi over 3 in decimal form is 660 degrees okay so this is 360 degrees uh, this is 270 so 360 plus 270 is equivalent to 630 so another 30 degrees and we land in uh, 300 if I'm not wrong so 300 degrees we landed in quadrant 4 wherein x is positive y is negative and 300 degrees uh, is basically pi over 3 and pi over 3 in quadrant 4 is uh, 5 pi over 3 I hope I do memorize the unit circle correctly. I'm pretty positive that this is right. Uh, in 5 pi over 3, the generic 5 over 3 has um, 1 over 2 and square root of 3 over 2. And because it's on quadrant 4, this is positive, this is negative. That's the final answer. All right. Let's move on to number 35. So far, so good. Alright, this is a lot bigger number than I thought. Anyways, let's proceed. So, convert this into uh, degrees, you get 750 degrees. 
which is basically if you dissect it it's 360 plus 360 plus 30 so uh, let's visualize it so we have 360 360 and a 30 degrees so literally it's just 30 degrees uh, quadrant we landed in quadrant 1 where x and y are positive um, because uh, basically 30 degrees it's nearest to the x-axis so this is pi over 6 pi over 6 has a generic uh, point of 3 over square root of 3 over 2 and 1 over 2 they're both positive and theoretically this is the final answer okay for number 36 uh, pi is equal to 39 pi over f oh, I'm sorry theta is equal to 39 pi over 4 all right this is a lot longer a lot a lot longer so this is 1755 degrees uh, which is if you dissect it it's 360 degrees plus 360 degrees plus 360 degrees plus 360 degrees plus 315 degrees <laughs> as humorous as it seems but yeah uh, let's visualize it so 360 360 360 360 there are basically four of them and 315 so uh, this is 270 degrees and this one is 300 degrees this one's 315 degrees so we basically landed on quadrant 4 where x is positive y is negative and 315 degrees uh, is basically since uh, it's the middle value uh, it's basically pi over 4 a generic 5 over 4 in quadrant 4 the only quadrant 4 the only pi over 4 in quadrant 4 we know that this is 5 7 11 so 7 pi, 7 pi over 4 uh, pi over 4 has the usual uh, square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 over 2 and because it's quadrant 4 x is positive y is negative so yeah this is the final answer alright uh, so far so good let's move on so Given x, y is a point on the unit circle corresponding to t, uh, find the value of all circular functions of t. Okay, so, so uh, when, when we mean by circular functions, they're basically sine, uh, cosine, tangent, and their inverses, their respective inverses. As for sine, it's cosecant. Cosines is secant. And for tangent, it's cotangent. Okay, so uh, it's pretty tiring to speak. Anyways, we haven't even been halfway through. My goodness. Anyways, uh, for number forty-five, uh, I'm sorry. A piece of hair. Uh, is distracting me anyways uh, for number 45 well we know that the point is on quadrant 2 
we still apply the SATC illustration or diagram. So because it's quadrant 2, only sine or cosecant is positive. And if we convert the point uh, from decimals to fractions, we could say that, uh, let's say, let's just write them like this. Uh, 0 0.8 is uh, four, 4 over 5, but the negative sign uh, 6, 3 over 5, it's positive. Uh, what we do now is, let's say, cosecant is... Um, I'm sorry. So we know that cosecant theta is equal to negative 4 over 5 and sine theta is equal to 3 over 5. Uh, second theta is basically negative 5 over 4 and cosecant theta is equal to 5 over 3 and tangent theta uh, is equal to uh, o over a we know that in cosine it's a over h sine is o over h so we could say that o is 3 and a is negative 4 so And so, because we know now the value of tangent, the inverse of it is basically the value of cotangent. So these are the values. These are the values of the six circular functions in number 45. That's it. For number 46, uh, 15 over 17, negative 8 over 17, uh, so they're, they're basically in quadrant 4, and so in quadrant 4, this is where x is positive and y is negative, and so uh, this is also where only uh, according to the SATC diagram, uh, only cosine and secant are positive. So, with that in mind, uh, you could say that cosine theta is equal to 15 over 17, sine theta is equal to negative 8 over 17, cosine theta is A over H, sine theta is O over H, uh, secant theta is equal to 17 over 15, cosecant theta is equal to negative 7 over 8, negative 17 over 8. Uh, for tangent, it's equal to O over A, which is equal to negative 8 over 15, and for cotangent, it's negative 15 over 8. Alright, that's it for number 46. Okay, for number 47, uh, we know that it's in quadrant 3. The point is in quadrant 3, so only so S, A, T, C, tan, only tangent and cotangent are the positive values. Everything else is negative. So, with the coordinate, with the point uh, negative five over thirteen and negative twelve over thirteen, you could say that x is, I'm sorry, uh, cosine theta is equal to negative five over thirteen, and sine theta is negative twelve over thirteen, and the inverse of cosine 
I'm sorry. Uh, I'll just write this out first. There you go. Second theta is negative 13 over 5. Uh, sine is cosecant theta is equal to negative 13 over 12. Tangent theta is equal to uh, O over H. I'm sorry. O over A. And so cotangent is equal to 5 over 12. So that's it. That's everything for number 47. Let's move on to number 48. Uh, still in quadrant 3. So all uh, all tangent and cotangent are positive only. So cosine theta is equal to uh, negative 24 over 25. Sine theta is equal to negative 7 over 25. Secant theta is equal to negative 25 over 24. Uh, cosecant theta is equal to negative 25 over 7. And so, uh, all right, tan theta is equal to O over A, which is equal to negative 7 over negative 24, which is positive, positive 7 over 24, and so cotangent is 24 over 7, the, the basic inverse. Okay, you got it. Let's move to number 49. Uh, this time, it's quadrant 1. All are positive. So, cosine theta is equal to 5 over 6. Sine theta is equal to square root of 11 over 6. Cosine theta is equal to, I'm sorry, secant theta is equal to 6 over 5. Uh, cosecant theta is equal to 6 over square root of 11. And so, tangent theta is equal to um, O over A. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, my back hurts. Anyways, uh, cosine is equal to A over H. Sine is equal to O over H. With that knowledge, uh, you could say that um, tan is equal to O over A, which is square root of 11 over 5. Cotangent theta is equal to 5 over square root of 11. Okay, we're done with number 49. Let's move on to number 50. So this is quadrant 4. Uh, basically, in S, A, T, C, only cosine or secant is positive. Yes, sir. Um, so, Cosine theta is equal to square root of 5 over 3. Sine theta is equal to negative 2 over 3. And so, secant theta is equal to 3 over square root of 5. Um, cosecant theta is equal to negative 3 over 2. Tangent theta is equal to O over A. So, let's say that this is A over H. O over H. O over A. Um, o is negative 2 and A is square root of 5. We know that tangent is negative because in quadrant 2, I'm sorry, in quadrant 4, 
only cosine, uh, cosine and secant are positive. So cotangent theta is equal to a over o, which is 2, I'm sorry, square root of 5 over negative 2. Or yeah, let's just box this answer. Okay, we're done. Let's move on to number 51. Number 51 is where, um, obviously, where x is negative and y is positive. This is obviously quadrant 2. This is where there are only um, sine and cosecant is positive. So, with that in mind, cosecant theta, or sorry, cosine theta is uh, negative 2 over 5. Sine theta is equal to square root of 21 over 5. Uh, second theta is negative 5 over 2. Cosecant theta is equal to 5 over square root of 21. And so tangent theta is equal to, let's say, uh, over a. 21 over square root of 21 over negative 2 uh -huh. and cotangent is negative 2 over square root of 21 these are the answers okay so 52 uh, this is cosine theta uh, we know that with x as positive and y as negative, this is obviously quadrant 4. So only cosine or secant is positive. That's for number 52. Uh, cosine theta is square root of 7 over 4. Sine theta is equal to negative 3 over 4. Secant theta is equal to 4 over square root of 7. Uh, cosecant theta is equal to negative 4 over 3. Tangent theta is equal to what? Uh, because cos cosine is a over h, sine is o over h. o is negative 3 and a is square root of 7. So negative, square, uh, negative 3 over square root of 7 is tangent theta. Cotangent theta is equal to negative square root of 7 over 3. Okay. Uh, let's just box the answer again. Oops. Okay. So far, so good. I might consider stopping somewhere and proceed for a part 3. I'll just finish 53 to 56 probably. Uh, so yeah, let's continue. Um, Negative x and y, both negative, uh, obviously it's quadrant 3. Only, uh, so s, a, t, c, so tangent, only tangent, cotangent are positive. And so cosine theta is equal to negative 1 over 3. Sine theta or theta is equal to negative uh, 2 square root of 2 over 3. Uh, secant theta is equal to negative 3 uh, cosecant theta is equal to negative 3 over 2 times square root of 2 and so tangent is equal to what? you know the drill O is that one and A is this so only tangent and cotangent are positive so these are negative, these are positive. Okay. That's it. Just give some spacing. Okay, number 54. Uh, both negative, so obviously this is uh, 
quadrantly uh, again uh, this is where only tangent and cotangent is positive so cosine theta is equal to negative 2 times the square root of 6 over 5 sine theta is equal to negative 1 over 5 uh, cosecant is equal to negative 5 secant is equal to negative 5 over 2 times the square root of 6 tangent is equal to what? Uh, let's figure it out again uh, cosine is a over h this one's o over h so tangent theta is uh, o over a and it's positive cotangent theta is equal to 2 times the square root of 6 over 1 finished number 55 so number 55 uh, since x and y are positive uh, it's quadrant 1 all positive so cosine theta is 1 over 2 sine theta is square root of 3 over 2 um, well, inverse of cosine is secant secant theta is 2 um, inverse of sine is cosecant theta which is 2 over square root of 3 so far so good I hope yeah so far so good nothing's wrong uh, tangent theta is equal to uh, O over A and so cotangent theta is A over O Box the final answer. Okay, uh, fifty-six. It's still quadrant one, so all positive. Cosine theta is uh, square root of three over two. Sine theta is equal to one over two. Uh, secant theta is equal to two over square root of three cosecant theta is equal to 2 tangent theta is equal to o over a cotangent theta is a over o Seven and fifty-eight. Let's answer that. Um, yeah, and I'll leave. Uh, I'll provide for part three to answer numbers seventy-one to seventy-six. Again, I apologize for the noise. Uh, there are a lot of people here right now. Freaking sucks. Anyways. Number 57, um, we have, because it's quadrant 2, only sine and cosecant are positive. Um, for, well, I'll just wait for people to simmer down. Uh, uh, please do not hesitate to skip this part of the video. Uh, really couldn't control them all right the course is clear let's proceed uh cosecant theta is equal to negative square root of 2 over 2 sine theta is equal to square root of 2 over 2 as simple as that and cosecant inverse is secant i'm sorry i keep saying cosecant when it's cosine i'm sorry about that uh, for cosine, its inverse is secant, which is negative 2 over square root of 2. Yeah, and for sine, it's cosecant, which is 2 over square root of 2. Tangent is O over A.
which is basically negative one but i'll just write it that way doesn't really matter i think correct me if i'm wrong okay that's number 57 number 58 uh quadrant four since x is positive y is negative at the same time uh and quadrant four is where only cosine and secant are positive so cosine is square root of two over three secant is where uh, it's negative square root of seven over three so just follow along i won't be speaking too much anymore pretty tired i'm so sorry Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. Grave mistake. Anyways, just tag along. By now, I, I hope you're already accustomed with how we solve these kinds of problems. Uh, Tens and toilets. Okay. And cotangent. Alright, that's number 58. Uh, Alright, I'll just leave this for another video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, it's been pretty... This, was, this actually was a lot. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you on part 3.